and there's that higher softer one lands a bit shorter and it's even closer than the one before that's ridiculous today i have a very special guest here to help me with my short game grant field all Thank right. you very much for coming out no today. Worries. Grant is one of Australia's leading coach and have been working with our Australian very own superstar, Cameron Smith. This is his third shot at the 12. That's what he can do. We're here at this new short game facility here at Pelican Waters. They've just renovated this. Yeah, so built it uh, sort of over the last two years. Yeah. So yeah, so um, we've got four different greens, three different bunkers, all the shots you'd want to hit. Um, you know, definitely a world class short game facility. Your short game just has to, has to get better. Yeah, well, you know, it's like I said to my son, we live probably. 250 meters from here, he's got no excuses now. It's yeah, like uh, no. you've got, you know, this is amazing. This, this is a playground so for nice. anybody that wants to uh, to improve their short Absolutely. game. Absolutely, sure. I'm really excited and yeah, just honored to be out here with you today. Awesome, let's All get right. into it. All right. So basically, we're going to start with just our stock motion, right? So I want you to tell me a little bit more about, you know, what are the things that you see as important with this shot, and you know, so if you were to hit this shot, you know, what are the things technically that you think are important? Um, I used to really like the idea of just kind of just uh, getting it up there and checking it up. Yep, so you like but, to see it through the air? Yeah, yep. but then playing a lot of Lynx course, I've just learnt that I just can't do that. It just doesn't stop. So I've learnt to kind of try to get better at hitting it lower mm -hmm. so I can control the shot a little bit more. Yep. And how do you do that? Uh, a little bit far back, yep. a bit further back, and then just using my body instead of trying to use my wrist to Yep. Flick it up. So you, you would say that you use a lot more hand action to play the higher one yep, and a lot absolutely. more Yeah, absolutely. My wrist okay. comes into play so much. Yeah. Right. So what I... about if you were to hit a stock motion? What what would you do there? Ooh. So just a medium flight. Yeah, wrist action. Okay. Yep. So one of the things for me is, people talk about this a lot, different release patterns, different moves. For me personally, we don't alter the swing. We actually alter you know, how we set the club, the speed of the club. Because for me, there's three main things you're trying to control. Okay, You're trying to control the quality of the contact of the, of the shot. Yep. Okay, You're controlling the loft that you deliver at impact and you're controlling the speed at which you deliver it at. Okay, so when we have more hand action, the idea is we create more speed and more loft, right? Yeah. So whereas for me, I'd rather see that we set more loft than trying to do it in swing. Right. Because you know, when I start doing it in swing, I start to lose control of the bottom a little bit more, the, con the contact on the face changes. So most of the stuff that we change, we change at address, and then we make the same motion. So Got for you. anybody that ever watches Cam, you'll look at all these motions will look very similar but he'll change, you know, like I said, that loft of club, mm. he'll change speed. You know, for us, we'll change speed, obviously, through length of swing, but we'll change tempo of swing. We'll never really sort of try and... We, we don't ever want to lose this, you know, through the swing, and we don't want to see that we've got force across the club or throwing the club more, OK? So yeah. he's delivering that club the same every time. Like, if you went to, you know, just past impact, you would see his left arm club, you know, his hands and the club line up exactly the same every time, whether he's playing high, low. Now, he'll make alterations to set up and ball position and the club that he chooses and things like that, yep. but that's how we'll change flight rather than doing it in swing as much. Show me how you'd set up and let's just hit a standard, you know, pitch shot. All right. Okay, oh. good. Yeah. What did you feel with that? Uh, it was actually really crispy. Yep, so the contact was good? Yeah, just... Speed? Yeah, flew out a little bit too, too hot. Yeah, a little bit too hot, yeah. good. All right, so and again, hit me one more. Okay. okay, so what do we feel there? Uh, that was a bit diggy, I think. Yep. I feel like, yeah, I didn't clip it as much as before, but yeah, yep. that was more of a... So what do you feel with the speed? Lot slower. Lot on slower. Second one. Yep. yep. Okay. So let's talk about that for a sec. So just yep. jump on this side for a sec. Yep. So if we think about it this way, right? So for me, when we swing the golf club, okay. So a lot of people with a short shot, because we're not trying to hit the ball a long way, mm. will, in my opinion, overuse our arm swing and overuse our wrist to generate the speed. So if I slow this down, at some point I've got to get some speed. Yeah. 
right? And if I'm not using my body properly, a lot of my speed's gonna come from pulling on the grip, which is why that club gets a little steeper, it gets a little bit more into the dirt, you know, a little bit too much leading edge, right? Because yep. we haven't got enough speed to hit the ball the distance that we want, mm. and our brain then wants to add some speed, right? So for me, I'm a really big fan of that we use a blend of rotation, my arms obviously swinging, the wrist naturally hinging, but they're hinging in response to the, the speed of the body, okay? so. The, the speed that the body works is going to be kind of, you know, what drives most of the speed. I always like to use the terminology that feels like the arms are going along for the ride. Right, okay. okay. Whereas if you've got nothing going on here, which you don't, <laughs> right, your speed's got to come from somewhere else. Right. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. So when we play high and we need more speed, we'll generally throw the club more. And when we're trying to play lower, we'll generally drag the grip a little bit more yep. and deal off it, right? Yep. So we're trying to change that flight in swing and we're trying to get the speed that we need. Whereas if we can get the speed out of the pivot, then I'm not trying to find it, okay? So then we can maintain the radius that we have through the swing, does that make sense? Okay, yeah, yeah, so yep. yeah, you're, you, so the arms just kind of follow. Yeah, but see it. how your body's got to work more yeah, to do but, that, right? Yeah, okay. So my analogy for this is if you, um, if you were playing basketball, right? So because I don't need a lot of speed to hit the ball that far, yep. I can get away with using more arms, can't I? Yeah, yeah. But if I was a basketball and I stood at a free throw line, I'm not gonna just use my arm to push the ball with, am I? Mm -hmm. I'm gonna use the ground, I'm gonna use my body, I'm gonna have this nice flow to the motion. Yeah. So it's the same thing here where I don't want a blend of pivot, my arms swinging, my wrist, like I said, will ha you know, hinge naturally yeah. relative to that motion. And that way I'm not trying to find speed through the hit so I can maintain this radius, I can deliver the loft the same every time. Okay, and then I can start to alter the setup in the loft to change the okay. flight. So it's not necessarily like stiff arm. No, uh, definitely like not. That. No, definitely not. A lot of times when people go, they talk about being wide. Like it's Jason like, Day is yeah. very dead hand. Yeah, if anything, like to me, he probably over does that. For mm. me, the wrist should be hinging in response to the arm swing. So it's like hammering a nail. As my arms swing, my wrist naturally yeah. hinges, right? Like I don't just hinge that first, yeah. swing my arm. I don't hold that straight and then hinge it late. Like it's a response, right? So as this is rotating, my arms are naturally swinging, my wrists are naturally hinging. Like if you look at all the players I coach, at certain points, they'll look identical because that's just what the wrists are doing in response to the right, body. Okay. It's not because we're teaching that they have to look like that. It's just what happens during the motion. Does that make sense? So yeah. first thing we're gonna do with this setup, I like to have the stance width about the width of a club head apart. Yep. Okay, we have that left foot slightly flared. What this does, it does two things. It allows me to get my sternum more on top of the ball. Okay, but the second thing it does is it encourages me to pivot properly. When I get that sort of square or even open stance, which a lot of us were brought up with mm. learning, and there's a lot of people that still use it and it, and it can work, but for me that restricts the body motion. Yep. Okay. So we're going to set where that right foot drops back a touch, sternum's a little bit more left, so the whole weight sort of stacked more on top. And then from there, we can start to use a little bit more body motion. And we're actually going to feel a lot more speed than you're used to to the pivot. Okay. Right. And then, like we said, the arms are going to go along for the ride. Yeah. Okay. okay. So you jump in there. All right. So about club head width apart, right foot drops back a touch. And what we're going to feel is we're going to feel this speed. So just swing back for me more through that rib cage, right? And see how your arms and the club naturally yeah. work in response to this rotation. Yep, okay. Yeah. And you'll see both the forward and back swings match up a lot more. You know, we're not trying to find speed on the way through. Yeah. Yep. So okay. just do that again. So you'll feel like the weight actually sort of goes a little forward in, in that backswing, right? So yeah. when we're pivoting properly, there'll be that little sort of shift forward. And then as this turns through, there'll be a little bit more of a shift and then we can actually rotate on the way through, right? So and you'll feel like you maintain that structure as we extend and, and rotate on the way through. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep. All right, so feel a little bit more through that body. So we're just gonna hit a stock one. We're not too worried about the distance yep. it's gonna go. So it'll be a little bit more speed to the body than you used to. Yeah, nice job. All right, so again, you're gonna feel a little bit more speed. So just off the ball for a sec. Yep, yep. So I'm just gonna give you the feel. So turn back. Yep, good. And then we're gonna feel that speed on the way through. Yep. Good. Okay. So keep the speed up to the pivot. That's it. Feel that contact with the ground. Ah, yeah. Yep. Cool. That's it. Good job. Nice job. Contact felt good. Yeah. So if we look at that there, right, landing spot's really good. Flight's obviously not quite high enough, right? So we need to add a little bit of loft for this shot. So yep. both of those, the contact was excellent on, right? So we need a little bit more flight and we need you know, to land a little softer, right? So we need to add a little bit of loft and we're gonna add some speed. 
Okay. Right? So the two ways we can add speed is we can add some length, which we're going to do for this shot, yeah. or we could increase the tempo of this. But like I said, we're not trying to get more speed out of the arms and narrowing this or throwing the club. Does that yep. make sense? Okay. So, yep. so this one, I want you to add a little bit more loft. Loft, yep. yep. We're just going to add a little bit more pivot, so you're going to turn back a little bit further, which again will carry the arms a little bit more. So add your loft, turn back a little bit more, good. Trust the pivot on the way through. So again, a little bit more flight, a little bit softer landing. You know, we've wow. now got four feet, right? Oh, that's so pure. That was good, eh? Wow. Yeah. So again, you know, we just think of it as just loft and speed, right? Yeah. So how much loft do I need and how much speed do I need? To hit that desired shot you know whereas like when we're throwing it and doing all these other things we can do it mm. but for me it just adds another level of inconsistency that doesn't really need to be there yeah right so it's like again let's add a bit more loft again let's yep. see if we can change the flight again so a bit more yep, yep. good and you're just going to add a touch more pivot again so we're just going to fly it at the next flight up and there's that higher softer one lands a bit shorter and it's even closer than the one before that's ridiculous so we've got our stock swing right yep. And then we've just changed those elements ever so slightly to change the total, you know, yeah. the, the trajectory of what the ball's doing. It's no different when you were talking about high and low before. You know, for me personally, I don't even teach a chip or a pitch anymore. Like I used to, you know, go, okay, it's a chip shot, and then this mm. is a pitch shot, and this is a flop shot, and this is yep. this shot. For me, it's just what do I want the ball to do? What do I need to alter in my setup and ball position and club's choice to make the ball fly like that and get the type of release that I'm looking for? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Wow, that's so interesting. Yeah. Right. So as I said, not that we can't do it other ways, but for me, I think if you've got one motion that you can yeah. work off with some change in length of swing, but change in loft and start to understand that, you know, and anybody that's ever watched Cam around the greens will notice like he plays a lot of shots with a lot of loft, mm. right? Now, traditionally, we were always taught that that was really risky. And, you know, for me, like, I look at it and how I was taught to hit a, a high shot was to get really wide, lower yeah. the handle, hinge it up, swing it outside that's the right. line, cut it across. And for me, that's why it's risky, right? Like, yeah, what we're doing here, we've got our stock and we've got a lofted one with a little bit more loft. We'll add a little, little, little bit of knee flex because the shaft's sitting down a little bit. Yep. But other than that, the motion's exactly the same. So I don't ever see that really high, you know, lofted one as that risky. Right, yeah, okay. Because I'm not changing the motion. I'm not trying to cut across. I'm not trying to swipe underneath. I'm just making the same motion. Because, you know, I look at it that loft is loft. So whether I throw the club, set the, whatever I do to it, the loft that I deliver at impacts, the loft I deliver at impact. Yeah. Right? And speed is just speed. Whether I get it out of the wrists and arms, whether I get it out of the hands, whether I thrust more or whether I just turn back further. Yeah. still just speed isn't it yeah, just keeping it so simple because trying to hit a high one here usually you know yeah i open it up wide stance yeah. like wait forward and try and use my wrist yeah and yeah. that's why for me that's why it's risky so risky. Right? so because you think about when i get like this i steepen this mm. so now as i come down a lot of times i'm coming down too steep so i start to back out of it to shallow the club and work it under and so i just... either bounce it up into it i dig it into the ground or i go straight under it yep. whereas here we're delivering that club the same every time so you know again just my opinion but like if i want to play low like we move a little bit of ball position, we would get the top half a little bit more left, you know, and then I would make the same motion. Obviously I'd reduce the speed because I've got less loft and the ball's going to go further. Yeah. Or if I need to, to steepen the attack angle, again, we're doing it at a dress, not in the swing. Yeah. So if we wanted to play a releaser towards the back, right, we can move the ball back a little bit in the stance. We don't go too, yep. excuse me, the, too far back. back right yeah, back yep. right one. So ball back in the stance, same setup sternum is going to be a little bit more left so we're just going to move this a touch more forward yep. which helps with a little bit of shaft lean but the pivot is the same we just got less speed because we don't need it to go as far yeah and you can see the release of the body is the same we've now got one that's landed there and released back to that back flag so if you want to go really high and short mm. let's lay it flat so a little bit narrower still yep uh, good yep so don't need to grip down as much you can still grip up okay yep, yep. good and use that body right so the speed's got to come from the pivot not from your you okay. over hinging the wrist yep. right so just trust that pivot through back and through keep the speed up and there's your high oh short my one god that's yep. ridiculous how much easier is that <laughs> it's crazy isn't it right that like, is crazy you know, we've tried to do it you know and, and again you know for me 
like I grew up, you know, having three or four different shots I was trying to teach. I was, you know, ball back, open stands, square stands, you know, lay down, yeah. all these things. And over time, I was like, well, we actually don't need that. Now, for me, it's important the rest of the, you know, the ingredients of what we teach with the setup and how the body moves to be able to allow that. But you can hit every shot that you want with minimal changes. That's less things for you to worry about. Yeah, exactly course. right. And you know, we haven't dug one in, we haven't thinned one, we haven't, oh. you know, because the radius hasn't changed. Because like I said earlier in the piece, when you use your body for the speed, you're not then trying to get it from other places. So when you see a lot of people sort of collapse the knees and yep. do all this, generally speaking, they haven't used their body, they've overhinged it, and they've got no speed. Yeah. So all of a sudden now they're trying to create the speed and you know, everything crashes into right. the ball yep. and, and goes, to, goes to crap basically. <laughs> Oh, this is so interesting. I'm so shocked at how consistent these shots are. So straight away, you know, obviously you're a good player, but straight away you've been able to control those things yeah. without really any training, you know? Yeah. Just some slight better understanding of how the body's working and how the loft's working, you know, to hit the shot that you want. So would it. that be the same on any type of uh, yeah. lie? Like even yeah. if it was like, you know, like kind of plugged in? Yeah. So again, if it's sitting down, yeah. right? Like we said, we're going to steepen our angle of attack with our setup. Okay and then we're gonna maintain the same structure through the swing. So like if you were in long rough, you know, instead of sort of picking it up and trying to drive it down, we would just set the top half weight a little bit more left, mm. which increases that angle of attack, yep. but it's done at an address, not through the swing, which is what a lot of people yep. do. And then you just make the same swing. It's just yeah. the angle. Is yeah, bit... exactly right. So yeah. it's just, you know, we're just collecting it at different parts of the, the swing yeah. and we've created a little, you know, so think of kind of that as your depth of arc, right? Mm -hmm. So the club swings down that. All we've done is tilted it a little bit that way yeah. to change that angle of attack. We're actually not changing it in the swing. Well, that was life changing. Right. I'm glad it was. Thank you so much. Guys, amazing tips and just priceless knowledge from Grant. So please be sure to check his socials. I'll link it in the description below. Um, once again, thank you very much. Awesome fun. Thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed thank it. You. Well, hopefully, I play a little bit better on the greens. Well, that I was pretty good yeah. what you did there. So, you know. On a good track. So, yeah, nice yeah. Work. thank you guys. Bye.